Shakti. Okay? And I'm back to videotaping Hello Remote Learners. Okay. Hello. So, you guys, who had we left? We were talking about verbals. Can anybody, like, delve in the depths of your brain and tell me what is a verbal? Is it there? Is it still there? No, no that's a Jared. Oh, but I love you have your notebook out and no, you're looking. Can anybody? Leah. Um, isn't a verbal like an I oh, got it. ing? Like a... Okay, a verbal is an umbrella, and there's three types of verbals. Back okay, up. it's a verb form used as another part of speech. Yep. Noun, adjective, or adverb. That's it. It's a verb that's not used as a verb. It's used as something else, and we learn one type of verbal Jared. is what? Jaren. Ian, oh, what's a Jaren? No. Uh, it's a <clears throat> verb ending in ing that acts as a noun. Yes. Oh, and surprise, surprise, you guys did great on the Jaren quiz. No way. Overall. Wait, what yeah. Was what yeah. Was great? So you, I, I don't even remember, but overall, I was really happy with the Jaren quiz. Okay, and I'm going to give those back to you too. So we've learned Jaren's. We have to learn participles. That's going to be a part of your edit. So real quickly, I'm going to give you a definition. I'm going to show you how to diagram, and then we're going to put this aside. So uh, do you have it? Okay, participle is a verb plus a verb that ends in ed or ing. Eli, you going to write this down? Um, that is used as an adjective. A verb that ends in ed or ing that is used as an adjective. Okay, now, when you say ed, you might put like a little star and just put irregular verb endings too. Just so you remember, like not every past verb ends in ed. Like some of them end in in, some end in t. So just kind of, you don't have to, just keep that in mind. So um, you've got a couple examples there. Like, we would like run, ran. Is that what you mean by yeah. not E-D-I-N-G? Right, okay. right. Or um, burn, burnt, break, broken. <clears throat> so anything that's like a past tense ending. So um, the examples, you've got the barking dog is annoying. So actually you have two here. One is barking. What's barking describing, Charlotte? The dog. Okay, so you see that's a verb plus ing. It's used as an adjective. It's describing the dog. But then there's another one that I didn't um, bold. What's the other participle in there? Yeah, annoying. Annoying. Yeah, it's like the um, the dog is what annoying. <clears throat> it's a predicate adjective. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If it's now the reason it can't be a gerund, it's describing the dog. Is it also because it's coming after a uh, linking verb? Mm, well, a gerund can come after a linking verb, but if it renames, it's a gerund. If it describes, it's a participle. Okay? I'm going to try to keep this simple. The children were delighted. It's not that the children are, are delighting. That's not their action. Delight describes children. So that's a participle. And then Lisa was dismayed. Dismayed is a participle describing Lisa at the broken watch. Broken, that's an irregular verb ending, describes watch. Okay, do you guys see that? Does that seem kind of straightforward? Yes. So you're gonna, you're gonna, let's do this. Let's just go through the first five and you're gonna name, this is gonna be your homework. So you're gonna go ahead and underline the participle and then you're gonna circle what's the word it's describing. So Eli, can you do number one? What's the participle? Galloping, and Alex, what's it describing? Uh, horse. So you underline galloping, circle horse. Okay, Hudson, number two, what's the participle? Singing. Okay, singing, and Charlotte, what's it describing? Birds. birds. Okay, which birds? Singing birds. So underline singing, circle birds. Andrew, number three, what's the participle? What's it describing? Goods. Goods. Number four, John Carter. What is the participle? Rolling. Rolling. And Mariah, what's it describing? Oh, stones. Stones. And then number five, Becca. What's the participle? 
Broken. Broken. And Tracy, what's it describing? Glass. Does it seem pretty straightforward? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's going to get a little bit tricky when we do participle phrases, but this is just your basic introduction. And then you're going to diagram, and go ahead and write this down. You're going to do exactly that, and then you're going to diagram one, three, seven, and nine. So why don't you circle those? One, do you circle them, Addison? One, three, seven, nine. And let's go ahead and diagram number two as a sample, okay? So number two, we listen to the singing birds. Um, Aiden, what is the subject of this sentence? Um, we. We, and Josie, what's the verb? Listen. Okay, we listened. And then what is the word to? Um, Addison? A preposition. It's a preposition. And so it's is, is this it's introducing a prepositional phrase. Is it adverbial or adjectival? How do you know, Aiden? Well, it has to be to the singing birds. Does it answer an adjective question? What kind, how Where? many, which, whose? Yeah. It says how we're listening or to what extent we're listening. And also there's only a verb. So we listened to birds, the, and here's our fun thing. Participles have to be curved. Oh, uh, I remember. Did you guys have this last year? No, you yeah. just told us. Okay, so it has to be curved, unless it's a predicate adjective, and then it's just gonna sit up there on the line, okay? So that's it. As long as you can recognize this is acting as an adjective, and then you're going to put it on a curved line. That's so weird. It is weird, it's kinda cute. Does anybody have any questions about it? It just looks weird, because it's like everything is straight lines, and then there's that. And then we have that. But you know, like we already had uh, gerunds, and you're going to get infinitives, but that's going to be next semester. Okay, can we leave this? Is this just enough of an introduction? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Now, here, here's what I want to say in, in love to you all. I think part of what, I think that you guys, I give you one thing, and we're usually doing grammar and writing, and you get very zealous about doing your homework, that sometimes you stop listening. So here's what I'm going to let you do for five minutes. You can work on this. I'm gonna hand out your gerund quiz. I'm gonna hand back your papers. And then I want you to put the homework away and we're gonna talk about those papers, okay? Okay, and I'll just say, I always say this, it doesn't make any difference, but you do not have to tell anybody your grade. You don't know that to anybody. Andrew. Are you gonna do the thing like where you like put on much A's and B's and C's? Or I, honestly, it just made me sad. No, I'm not doing that. Is there, is there something who actually did That's not a good sign. Okay. Well, there's my excuse. Mom, everyone did bad. I say that all the time. Okay, you guys, use this to work, work on your homework. At least it's the rough draft and it's not the final.
Okay, I would show her my oh, so, oh, there's so much What? <laughs> it has to be what? Wait, on the work side of it, I thought I had to go source one for two, two, two. Not alpha I do write nice comments going to be twice as much. Uh, and you can see I spent a lot of time. You have everything you need to make this a stellar paper. So the next one is the final. The next one is the final. Wait, oh, you just have to make corrections. Wait, it's out of 130 or out of 73? I mean, you just have to make corrections. Wait, is, is, it, is it out of 130 or is it out of 73 now? It's, it's, out, of, still, is it out of 73? Hey, it's out, out of seven. Oh, you guys, this is important. For you all, um, I don't think I changed it on your paper, but it is out of 73, oh, not 70. Oh. So like, just, and really that was good news for you because just attaching your outline, it added extra points, okay? So th those were like five extra points. So it's out of 73 if you're trying to figure out your percentage. I would say if you were a 60 or above, you are in, Amazing shape, amazing. If you were in your the 50s, you're okay. That's that's average. If you are less than 50, you're going to need to spend time on this. You miss some significant pieces. Okay. Um, you do you do your grade into the thing. I think I know how you find that you do you do where you got as to how much it's worth. Yeah, like you would take the number. Okay, so you guys, let's do this for a minute. Um, I, you have in front of you edits, and this is this is where I really. Oh gosh, hold on. Okay, this is where I need you guys to listen. Okay, this way. Now you guys, everything in you wants to look through your paper, you wanna focus on you. I get that. I am going to give you time to focus on you. But what we're gonna do every day this week, all Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, hopefully we'll be here Friday, um, you're going to have, there's one part of your paper edits we're gonna talk about. And then second, you're gonna have time to work on those paper edits. And we'll also talk a little bit about participles, like 15 minutes every day. So here's what I want to ask you in just a second, Addison. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I've got questions about this. So when you're writing in a few minutes, that's your time to ask me your specific questions. But I do not want to overwhelm you more than you're already overwhelmed. So we're only focused on the first part of your rubric right now, which is structure. So you can look at that rubric and you can see there were five paragraphs, each one needed to have a topic, sentence, or a thesis, needed support, or a clincher. Now, let me tell you something. We didn't get to clinchers. So I circled clincher on your rubric. Nobody lost points for missing a uh, clincher, okay? It's just, hey, remember to put that in, and we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so Addison, do you have a general question before we go through this? Oh, uh, it's not a general question. Okay, so I, I do want to answer your specific questions. So, you guys, look at this. Everybody's eyes on this. We're going to talk about some things that I noticed in a lot of people's papers. The other thing is I took samples from people's papers. And right now I don't even remember whose paper they were from because, you know, there were 60 of these. So you don't need to say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe she took that from my paper. Okay, we're all learning from one another. So the first thing I want to say, you were supposed to open with an attention grabber and 80% of you did. If you didn't open with an attention grabber, if you just jumped in and said, um, John Adams is a very important American, you, you lost a point and a half for that. So you need to have an attention getter. But the other thing is, 
I loved the quotes that people had, but you need to transition. So this first example is what a lot of people did. They had a quote. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And then they just did a dash, Thomas Jefferson. You need to make it, you need to transition. So the next one is a good example. You can put a star by that. Right here. Okay, this is a very good example. I shall never pay a dollar of your unjust penalty. These words were spoken by famed women's rights activist, Susan B. Anthony. Okay, so you, you've got to have your quote and then you don't just put dash, you have a complete sentence that transitions it. Who spoke these words? Okay, is that clear? Uh, Second thing, in text citations, if you have a direct quote, right after that, you need to have in parentheses where that came from. And there is a paper attached to the back of this that is in, oh, is there? Do you have a paper that says in-text citations? No. There is not. Okay, so skip in-text citations. Oh, it ends here. Okay, I'm going to give you a paper that has in-text citations, but here's what I want to tell you. All you're doing is putting the last name of the author and if there's a page number. So then I can go to your work cited and I can go, oh, there's the source. It was by Wallacott. And then I look and I go, oh, there's the article. I can see it. So you're just putting the last name of the author in a lot of your cases, there's no author. It's just an article. If that's the case, you just put the first three words of the article title. So let's say your article title was John Adams Autobiography. Well, then you would just put John Adams Autobiography in quotation marks. After the quote? Yes. And you say the quote is fine, mm -hmm. you say it? So I'm gonna give you a handout about that. Um, we're going to do a lot more of that with mini thesis, but I'm going to give that to you. I will help you with that in class. It wasn't, you were counted off on it this time, but you do need to add it. Okay, your thesis needs to be one sentence. One sentence. Some people were doing three and four sentences. It's one sentence. Is that the beginning or end of the paper? End of the introduction. Your last sentence. And most of you put it in the right place. Okay, your background information. You guys, it should relate to the topic of your person and how they're great American. So don't give arbitrary information. For example, I don't need to know the names and ages of their siblings. That usually, unless their sibling made a huge difference or part of their story, we don't need that. I don't really even need the name of their, their um, spouse unless like I think in your paper, the spouse matters. She helped with some of his significant contributions. So just make sure that it relates. Um, and you, let's see, the information will be in the body. Of, don't give information that's in the body of your paper. So don't talk about how this person um, failed as a student and struggled with learning disabilities and then the very next paragraph put it in challenges. It's stuff that's not anywhere else in your paper. Okay. okay, and then you do need one phrase or statement in the intro that tells the reader who's your person. A lot of people, like this one on Thomas Jefferson, look back up at that one in um, italics. This person just jumped in. Jefferson was born on the 13th of April in 1743. Now you may think, oh, everybody knows who Thomas Jefferson is. Everybody knows who Michael Jackson is, or Abigail Adams, or Shirley Tibble. I want you to pretend you're writing your paper for an alien who does not know, who does not know that Michael Jackson is like one of the greatest entertainers ever, or that Shirley um, Temple was an, an actress. So you just need something. So um, look down, I've given you two examples. So under background information, all, everything in italics is an example. So this is great. That's one small step for mankind, one giant leap for mankind. These words were spoken by astronaut Neil Armstrong as he stepped off the Eagle landing module, took the first human steps on the moon. All I needed was astronaut. Just something to say, here's what they are. Does that make sense? Businessman, politician, president, entertainer. Something that kind of gives context as if I didn't know anything. So that's the thesis. No, that's just part of your background information. Okay. Okay. The thesis comes at the end of the book. Yes. And then here's another one. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. 
This is a quote from a song by one of the best entertainers in history, Elvis Aaron Presley. Again, they're, they're, I, I get just a little bit of like, here's who this person is. You haven't even told me why they're an important American yet, but I know who they are, what their role was. Does that make sense? Okay, so then, this is so important. Would everybody just pick up your pencil and put a star where it says organized paragraphs around topic sentences and clinchers. It's like halfway down on the page. Okay, we did not do clinchers. So this is something that everybody, except a few of you, of course, I was so proud of those of you that put clinchers in and kind of pulled that forward from Mrs. Smith's class. But here's an example. Your topic sentence is gonna be either about challenges, accomplishments, or legacy. It's supposed to be general your clincher is going to be more specific. So let me give you an example. Here's a topic sentence from somebody's paper. Dr. Seuss was faced with many challenges before and during his writing career. Okay, this is a great topic sentence. It's, it, it frames the paragraph, it doesn't go into detail. Okay, so then I added this, this would be a clincher that would go with it. Despite personal loss and professional rejection, Dr. Seuss did not stop pursuing his writing career. So do you see in your clincher, you're a little more specific. Like um, despite, um, despite many setbacks or you, you want to, whatever it is that you described, you're just gonna summarize that in your clincher, okay? Now we'll say a lot of you in your topic sentences, you're such optimists. You wanted to say, um, you know, Aaron Presley, overcame every challenge thrown to him. In your topic sentence, don't talk about overcoming. You can do that in your clincher because your clincher is gonna go into your next paragraph, which will be about accomplishments. Does that make sense? So topic sentence general, clincher specific. Here's another one. Topic sentence, during his career, Steve Jobs encountered and overcame many challenges to become one of the most influential businessmen ever. Now this is long. This person could have just said Steve Jobs encountered many challenges. That's all they needed, okay? But here would be a clincher. Clearly, Steve Jobs did not let difficulty prevent him from pursuing success. So I'm, I'm trying to transition to accomplishments. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's a thing for you to work on in class because that will be graded off on the final draft. Okay, conclusion. Your conclusion needs a clear transition. I gave you three things. Um, in conclusion, without a doubt, did I give you another one? Maybe I just gave you two things, but you need something that says, this is coming to an end. And then you're paraphrasing your thesis. Many of you cut and paste your thesis from the intro and you dropped it into your thesis for the conclusion. And I, I like just look back and I look, I'm like, oh, there it's word for word the same. So you need to paraphrase it. So, oh, so it can't be the same. It can't be the same, okay? okay? So here's a, this is an excellent paraphrase and you don't see this person's topics, um, original thesis, but great transition, without a doubt. Ray Kroc was an important figure in American history because he overcame many obstacles, started the greatest fast food franchise, and with the help of his wife, left a very important legacy in philanthropy and charitable work. That was yours, yes. Okay, so what, what, um. Sorry, now I'm gonna embarrass you. What Hudson did is he got more specific in his paraphrase because he'd already talked about his life, okay? He didn't mention his wife in his thesis, but he mentioned his wife in his paraphrase thesis. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, turn the page. We're just gonna go down to where it says style. We'll do style tomorrow. Um, include details about death in the conclusion. So some of you have people like, don't put their death in challenges. Everybody dies. It would have been a challenge. Still. It, it doesn't make sense to say that they died, then go what if it was and say this is what challenge. they did. Yeah, like, what if okay, they, so here's where you yeah. could put death as a challenge. Like, um, Steve Jobs had cancer a lot, okay? But even then, I wouldn't talk about his death as a challenge. Once you die, you're not challenged. But cancer is a challenge, not Cancer was the challenge, not death, okay? I know that's really hard for yours because part of yeah. yours is that he died early, but the challenge was to his family, not to him. Yeah. Well, what if, oh, okay? 
Oh, what if Elvis died because of his drug addiction? The challenge was his drug addiction. Yep. So save the death until the conclusion. Okay? That sounds so weird to be saying that. Okay. And then some of you, I don't know if you got to the end and you were like, oh my gosh, it's only two pages. What can I say? Maybe I'll go back and talk about their siblings and how many kids they had and what their kids did when they grew up. <laughs> so don't just draw, and I get it. Believe me, I've done that. But don't just drop filler. Don't put new information in. You're summarizing their life. If you want to lengthen it, add another quote and say, this quote summarizes the life of Gilligan or whoever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mine, um, his son-in-law helped start Chili's with him, like the restaurant Chili's. So I think I have that in here, but should I elaborate more on that? To, like, find more well, that's space? really part of his legacy, that yeah. Chili's is still around today. So yeah, okay. yeah, you could do that. Um, Amy? Is the final draft going to be like counted on page numbers? Because I was really struggling getting So I really hate page numbers as a guideline. I mean, I have to give you a guideline because it would be so frustrating. But here's what I noticed. What I was looking at is, could you write a persuasive paper in two pages? I didn't really see anybody that could, but you could do it in two and a half. Yeah, I didn't know it was really supposed to be like persuasive. I thought this was more like talking about them. It is, that is the big thing, you guys. This is not a report. This is, you're trying to persuade me that this person really is somebody who should be a mayor. Remember. Yeah, so I think those of you that had it short, I put comments of where I thought you could, and I think I, I did put it in there, where it was either accomplishments or legacy, Aiden. But I, I tried to give people that were really short ideas, okay? Um, so you should be hitting two and a half pages. You did not lose credit. If your paper was one page for rough draft, you did not lose credit for that. What was the page limit, like five? Four. Oh, four. four. I had one person write five pages. Only one person, and it wasn't in this class. I don't I'm pushing think. Four did you I'm write five? I don't think so. No, I think yours was I had very to cut suitable. I my own um, work cited in half because I would have written a lot more than what you can do. I was working. I don't I mean, know. I just like so you guys, here's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't need to be more than four, for uh -huh. sure. It should be at least two and a half. Okay? Okay, so the last, two last things. Be specific. So here are some things that, these are very general. Her impact for UNICEF is still remembered today. Her performance in 1989 is what locked her plan into place. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the plan is and I don't know how it was locked into place. So just make sure that you're specific. And then here's another one. People started founding UNICEF. This double inspired actors and actresses to join the movement. I don't understand that either. Why were they inspired to join the movement? So be very specific. And again, I go back to imagine that you're writing this for an alien. Oh, and here it is, give context. Imagine your paper's being read by an alien with no prior knowledge. So this is gonna bug you guys, but do not assume that I know what the NBA is, or MVP, or an all-star. <laughs> oh, and it was not just you, okay? So if you do an abbreviation, and even, even you guys, if you do the United States, lots of people do that. That is not correct. You write United States, and then that's the first time you reference it. In parentheses, it's U period S, okay? Just like TV is that, period. But the first time you write something, you write it out, you know, the, the National Association for Colored People, and then you put the abbreviation in parentheses, and then you can read that, use that abbreviation the rest of the paper. You don't ever have to spell it out again. Okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, do I have to explain what a book is? Or, like, should I just leave that? What a book is? What a book, because you're saying oh. you're speak to aliens. It's, it's a literate alien. He knows what books are. Okay. Okay? Or just pretend that I, like, immigrated here from... I don't know. Russia. Kazakhstan. And I just don't know anything about American culture. Just a little bit. It's a real place. Kazakhstan. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do. I am so pleased you do have 15 minutes left. I'm going to come around. I'm going to answer questions. But I would work on the support part of your paper. Like, go through, make sure your topic sentences are clear and your clinchers. Make sure that your your introduction, that all I'm focused on is that top half of your rubric. What's the writing model? 
You get get a computer and write. Oh, I don't even know. Oh. Okay. Use this time well. Mm, uh -huh. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work around. Uh, <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, Miss Chillers, do you want me to stop the video? Andrew, what's good? Hey. Miss Chillers, do you want me to stop it? There's a famous scene in the. I don't know if we're supposed to be hot. No, 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 no. Should we stop the video? I don't think they want to watch us. Yeah, they don't really want to watch us comment.